Rob, you uh, completed part one of the mission last week in terms of getting into the last eight. Now you've talked about securing that home uh, quarter final. What have you said to the guys this week? Well, very much what you've said is that you know we've talked kind of what we've talked all year in every competition we've been involved in that you want to battle to keep things in your own hands and not be in a scenario where you need other people to lose or you need a team to go and do your favour and win somewhere for you to be able to sneak on through. You know you want to keep it in your own hands. And we're doing that in the Premiership at the moment because when you're in the top four. You know your results from now on in can decide where you end up, um, and when you when you're kind of fighting at the top of your pool, your results will tell you whether you win the pool to get a quarter final. Now our result will tell us whether we get a home quarter final draw, and that's the fantastic thing to keep talking about. Is let's keep things in our own hands. Let's keep working very hard for the things we want to achieve. Um, we've done that exceptionally well so far, uh, and as you say, now that we've got to this stage, to not see at home uh, with a home game in the last round. And, and drive that home quarter final would be a little disappointing because, you know, I think we would love to reward. I mean, we, we don't yet know where the quarter final will take, play, take place, but obviously we'd love to reward the players and the crowd and the club um, with either a game here or a game very nearby. And I think um, those things make it a very important game for us. When you talked after the game last week, you, you almost talked like it was a victory because given all that had happened, the disruptions, illness, whatever. You talked about it being really positive, and, and it was a tough performance up there, wasn't it, from the guys? Yeah, and I, I kind of have, I've looked back on it, and I think actually, even even if we'd have had a perfect training week and we hadn't had any withdrawals and everything had gone perfectly, it was, still would have been a good result because you know you, you're going to Glasgow, you're away from home in the Highland Cup to a team who still had something to genuinely fight for. You know, they're still in the they're still actually in the competition now, you know, and they had a genuine opportunity there to to knock a game over at home. Um, and then go into that final round with everything to fight for for a quarter final for themselves as well. And so to turn up there and you know get a, a three points out of that fixture, you would take that in virtually any other way round in the Highland Cup almost ever. You know, there's plenty of times when that would have been good enough to put us through, we collected three points away from home in a couple of places. And so I'm, I'm very I'm very keen to not uh, turn around to players after achieving three points in a, in a away Highland Cup round and starting to talk disappointing about it because we've been winning if we've won a few games because you've got to stay real you've got to keep the reality to it you know Munster Munster came here well, last year and got a draw and were absolutely delighted because they knew that actually in a lot of ways they'd, that gave them the best opportunity to win the double header two points away from home they kind of they went well if we beat that extra at our place we'll probably That'll be enough for us, you know. That's how things will pull, well pull out. And I think you can't can't move away from that in any circumstance. And I think to make sure, a we scored the tries, b b we fought as hard as we did, we committed so much to the game, um, had the opportunity to win it at the end, but still came with a very good draw, you know. And then, as I say, that the, almost the icing on the cake was that we managed to do that with not perfect scenarios, but whatever the scenarios, that was a that was a good result. Um, it's not always about performance, you know. The, some of the perform some parts of performance were very good. Some point parts weren't so good. You know, you, you, you never want to concede 31 points in any game. So you know, some parts weren't so good. But we hung in there and we fought, and that's often the most important quality in Highland Cup. And, we, and as I said, we showed that in spades. Rob, does it show the growing maturity of the squad as a, as a whole as well? That probably two, three years ago, you may have lost that game last week. Isn't it? Uh, I think it shows a few things. It shows a bit of maturity and, and, and extra quality as well. You know, the players we've got here are improving. Um, and the, the squad is improving in its quality and the squad, as you say, is improving its maturity um, and its understanding and actually it, it's actually just becoming um, a, a little bit older and a little bit more experienced. You know, our, our, I keep saying, you know, I said this for two years, you know, our, our age range across the squad is fantastic and it's still fantastic, and it, but it's a little bit more fantastic in, in a way because we're now maybe coming to the side of that mid-twenties group with a lot of experience of finals and semi-finals and a few Highland Cup campaigns and some highs and lows in it and I think all of those things uh, they're all things that will benefit you on you know as long as you're prepared to work hard and train hard and prepare well and, and that's the kind of group we've got at the moment. On to this weekend you talked about it Our Rochelle coming here nothing to lose everything to gain mm. danger 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 I think was your words wasn't yeah. it? Well exactly I mean you know they've, they've gone to Glasgow and made changes and won um, they've gone to Sale having made some changes and other than what it was almost an unbelievably ridiculous red card. Um, they were in a very close game, um, and we were even pushing at the end. You know, Sale Sale didn't have that game um, all their own way by any means. And if anything, you know, I, I'm not sure whether they're they're more dangerous away from home in the fact that they they play a little bit more, they look a little bit more relaxed, um, 
They look very competitive. They're obviously a squad, as a lot of top French squads are, that can make numerous changes and don't really look you know, all that different. Um, and as I say, if we get our mental approach wrong in any way, that we think the tough part's done, uh, I'm almost, I, can, I can almost feel it now, I'm almost certain that we'll come unstuck. You know, the battle for us is to turn up on the day. We've kept challenging the players with that every week and that will be our challenge again this week. You had the good news today, Stuart Hogg has been made captain of Scotland. Uh, that's a rich reward for him and you must be delighted. Yeah, obviously, so pleased for him. You know, it's a bit like anything. You know, we, we talk all the time here and it's, it's not idle chatter that we want our players to be successful uh, in the things they want to be successful in. So for some, like, for some guys, that's their international careers. Um, for, for some guys, I mean, if you have an international career that you, you thrive in and then you have the opportunity to captain your national side, you know, they're huge honours. You know, it's, not, it's not something that happens to everybody and it's not something that comes along that often. Um, and I think, you know, I, you know, I certainly don't underestimate the importance of playing for Scotland uh, for Stuart or how proud he is to play for Scotland. And I know um, he's absolutely delighted and, uh, and amazingly proud to be captain of Scotland now. It's a, it's a huge honour for him. He's in, but Sam Skinner isn't. That's understandable. I imagine. You, know, you spoke to Gregor last week up in Scotland. What, what, what was his thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I think I, he's in a similar position to Tom Francis. You know, Tom Francis is involved in the Welsh squad either. You know, these guys, they, Tom Francis is a bit behind. Um, Skins obviously, but Skins is just about ready to go now. You know he's not he's not going to feature this week against La Rochelle, but um, if everything goes well, he'll feature in our A League game next week, and then he'll be up and running. And then as far as we're concerned, he's available for selection for everybody, as Scotland whoever whoever wants him. So that that's kind of how it goes. I can completely you know if if I was a Scotland coach, I wouldn't be involved in him either. You know there's there's no match fitness there. There's there's no footage that shows he's back from injury um, and how well he's playing. So. You know, it still wouldn't surprise me if he doesn't get involved somewhere in the Six Nations. The Six Nations is quite a long tournament now, uh, with break weeks, etc. Um, and if Skins comes in, we've got plenty of games. It shows good form. Um, I, I have no doubts he might be at the end of the Six Nations.